Israelis have been arrested or detained. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins, but when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 911 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Numerous classified documents obtained by Fox News indicate that even prior to September 11th, as many as 140 other Israelis had been detained or arrested in a secretive and sprawling investigation into suspected espionage by Israelis in the United States. Investigators from numerous government agencies are part of a working group that's been compiling evidence since the mid-90s. These documents detail hundreds of incidents in cities and towns across the country that investigators say, quote, may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. Documents say they, quote, targeted and penetrated military bases, the DEA, FBI, and dozens of other government facilities, and even secret offices and unlisted private homes of law enforcement and intelligence personnel. The majority of those questioned, quote, stated they served in military intelligence, electronic surveillance intercept, and or explosive ordnance units. A general accounting office investigation referred to Israel as Country A and said, quote, according to a U.S. intelligence agency, the government of Country A conducts the most aggressive espionage operation against the U.S. of any U.S. ally. A defense intelligence report said Israel has a voracious appetite for information and, quote, the Israelis are motivated by strong survival instincts which dictate every facet of their political and economic policies. It aggressively collects military and industrial technology, and the U.S. is a high-priority target. The document concludes, quote, Israel possesses the resources and technical capability to achieve its collection objectives. What about this question of advanced knowledge of what was going to happen on 9-11? A bigger question, they say, is how could they not have known? Almost a direct quote, Brett. Some American terrorism investigators fear certain suspects in the September 11th attacks may have managed to stay ahead of them by knowing who and when investigators are calling on the telephone. How? By obtaining and analyzing data that's generated every time someone in the U.S. makes a phone call. One sitting in safe, please. Here's how the system works. Virtually all call records and billing in the U.S. are done for the phone companies by Amdocs Limited, an Israeli-based private telecommunications company. Amdocs has contracts with the 25 biggest phone companies in America and more worldwide. It is virtually impossible to make a call on normal phones without generating an Amdocs record of it. In recent years, the FBI and other government agencies have investigated Amdocs more than once. But sources tell Fox News that in 1999, the super-secret National Security Agency, headquartered in Northern Maryland, issued what's called a top-secret, sensitive, compartmentalized information report, TSSCI, warning that records of calls in the United States were getting into foreign hands in Israel in particular. An internal Amdocs memo to senior company executives suggests just how Amdocs generated call records could be used, quote, widespread data mining techniques and algorithms, combining both the properties of the customer, like credit rating, and properties of the specific behavior. But U.S. counterintelligence analysts say it could also be used to spy through the phone system. The NSA has held numerous classified conferences to warn the FBI and CIA how Amdocs records could be used. At one NSA briefing, a diagram by the Argonne National Lab was used to show that if the phone records are not secure, major security breaches are possible. Another briefing document said, quote, It has become increasingly apparent that systems and networks are vulnerable. Such crimes always involve unauthorized persons or persons who exceed their authorization, acting on exploitable vulnerabilities. Those vulnerabilities are growing because, according to another briefing, the U.S. relies too much on foreign companies like Amdocs for high-tech equipment and software. Fox News has documents of a 1997 drug trafficking case in Los Angeles in which telephone information, the types that Amdocs collects, was used to, quote, completely compromise the communications of the FBI, the Secret Service, the DEA, and the LAPD. We learned that the concern about phone security extends to another company founded in Israel that provides the technology that the U.S. government uses for electronic eavesdropping. 
The company is Comverse Infosys, a subsidiary of an Israeli-run private telecommunications firm with offices throughout the U.S. It provides wiretapping equipment for law enforcement. The manufacturers have continuing access to the computers so they can service them and keep them free of glitches. This process was authorized by the 1994 Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act, or CALEA. While CALEA made wiretapping easier, it has led to a system that is seriously vulnerable to compromise and may have undermined the whole wiretapping system. Quote, law enforcement's current electronic surveillance capabilities are less effective today than they were at the time CALEA was enacted. But the complaint about this system is that the wiretap computer programs made by Converse have in effect a back door through which wiretaps themselves can be intercepted by unauthorized parties. Adding to the suspicions is the fact that in Israel, Converse works closely with the Israeli government and under special programs gets reimbursed for up to 50% of its research and development costs by the Israeli Ministry of Industry and Trade. But investigators within the DEA, INS, and FBI have all told Fox News that to pursue or even suggest Israeli spying through Converse is considered career suicide. And sources say that while various FBI inquiries into Converse have been conducted over the years, they've been halted before the actual equipment has ever been thoroughly tested for leaks. A 1999 FCC document indicates several government agencies express deep concerns that too many unauthorized, non-law enforcement personnel can access the wiretap system. And the FBI's own nondescript office in Chantilly, Virginia, that actually oversees the Kalia wiretapping program, is among the most agitated about the threat. A handful of former U.S. law enforcement officials involved in awarding Converse government contracts over the years now work for the company. Numerous sources say some of those individuals were asked to leave government service under what knowledgeable sources call troublesome circumstances that remain under administrative review within the Justice Department. And what troubles investigators most, particularly in New York in the counterterrorism investigation of the World, Ter World Trade Center attack, is that on a number of cases, suspects that they had sought to wiretap and surveil immediately changed their telecommunications processes. They started acting much differently as soon as those supposedly secret wiretaps went into place. Los Angeles, 1997. A major local, state, and federal drug investigation sours. The suspects? Israeli organized crime, with operations in New York, Miami, Las Vegas, Canada, Israel, and Egypt. The allegations? cocaine and ecstasy trafficking, and sophisticated white-collar credit card and computer fraud. The problem. According to classified law enforcement documents obtained by Fox News, the bad guys had the cops' beepers, cell phones, even home phones under surveillance. Some who did get caught admitted to having hundreds of numbers and using them to avoid arrest. Quote, this compromised law enforcement communications between LAPD detectives and other assigned law enforcement officers working various aspects of the case. The organization discovered communications between organized crime intelligence division detectives, the FBI, and the Secret Service. Shock spread from the DEA to the FBI in Washington and then the CIA. An investigation of the problem, according to law enforcement documents, concluded, quote, the organization has apparent extensive access to database systems to identify pertinent personal and biographical information. When investigators tried to find out where the information might have come from, they looked at Amdocs. Investigators still fear that the firm's data is getting into the wrong hands. A main contractor is Converse Infosys. Asked this week about another sprawling investigation and the detention of 60 Israelis since September 11th, the Bush administration treated the questions like hot potatoes. I would just refer you to the Department of Justice with it. I'm not familiar with the report. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained, whether it's because they are in intelligence services or what they were doing. I will. Uh...